Hi guys, I'm Coach Rebecca Smith, the founder and director of Complete Performance Coaching. We are a group of sports psychology coaches who specialize in working with young athletes. We help them overcome fear, break through anxiety, and find their flow and build confidence. We do this through two different main methods. One is through one-on-one -on -one coaching over FaceTime or Skype, and the other is through the complete online training center, the Perform Happy Community, which is a, an ever-expanding, growing community of amazing families, really committed young athletes, and we all come together and learn skills through live trainings, through pre-recorded trainings, through challenges, exercises. We have everything that you need to get you or your child up to speed mentally. So today I'm, I'm in a different position because I need you to be able to see my children's book here. So if you are listening on the podcast, um, I'll do my best to make it so that you don't have to see what we're, what we're looking at here. But if you can watch the video, that'll be the ideal. Because today I'm gonna talk about how to prime the very youngest athletes. I say athletes in quotes because I have a three-year-old gymnast who she technically, you know, she goes every week, she wears her leotard, she does her gymnastics, and she deals with fear, she deals with anxiety, she deals with perfectionism at three. So I have a friend who's got a, another, a daughter who's kind of similar to mine in that she is really concerned with doing things right, you know? And so she was asking me questions about, you know, what do I do with a, a little perfectionist or how do I help her to not be so hard on herself? How do I help her to try when she just wants to give up because she knows she won't win or be perfect? So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna bring my uh, my three-year-old examples to the whole community here and, and you guys can take from it what you will. I know some parents out there have a gazillion kids and you might have a 17-year-old and a three-year-old who are all doing sports. So you can definitely benefit from this, but anybody of any age can can get the lesson that I'm that I'm getting at here. So I'll go over two different books that I've discovered in the last week that I started reading and was like, "Oh my gosh, this is what I teach." Okay, so this one is called I Believe in Myself and it's written by Lori Wright. And it starts I'm probably not going to read the whole thing. You guys will get the gist. My name is Poppy and I believe in myself. Oh, by the way, uh, side note, my one of my teachers in grad school said, you know, when you when you do videos, you really sound like you're leading, reading a children's book. So you might want to work on that so you sound more professional. Well, I'm going to like lean into that today. Okay, anyway, here I go. Um, here's Poppy again. When I have to go out of the room and leave my toy alone, I feel anxious. I'm not sure what to do. So that's her problem, right? And that's And she feels anxious. And then we've got these three solutions here. I can warn everyone around to not touch it. I can hide my toy. I can just bring it with me. I can figure out what to do. I believe in myself. <clears throat> so this is very similar to an exercise that I do with my athletes um, in the live trainings. I'm also putting together a workbook that's gonna have a similar exercise I call the confidence map. I also do this with one-on-one -on -one clients where we figure out, okay, what is your goal? And then what are your fears? And and what are those obstacles that are going to get in the way? You know, things that like, I don't know what's going to happen. Somebody could take my toy or I could get injured. I could, um, I could have a mental block. My coaches might not be supportive. They come up with, okay, what's the, what's the fear? What could go wrong? And then we come up with three solutions. So we think about, you know, the injury. I get anxious because I feel like I could get injured. Okay, what are three solutions? First, let's prevent it checking mats, communicating with coaches, making sure that your environment is nice and safe. And then let's say you do get injured, going to professionals that will help you heal quickly, listening to what the doctor says, doing your physical therapy, wrapping, icing, you know, the various ways to heal. Um, another one is imagery. So you make sure that you're visualizing the healing, you're visualizing what's gonna happen when you're back in action, you're doing reps in your mind that you can't do physically. So those would be you know, those three solutions. And then after you look at that and go, okay, when I think I might get injured, I get anxious and I'm not sure what to do. I can figure out what to do. I believe in myself. I mean, it seems so simple, but it really is. If you have, if you have some ideas of how you can deal with something, you don't have to feel anxious. Okay, the next adventure with Poppy. When I see a spider, I feel panic and I'm not sure I can handle it. 
I can leave the country. I can try to trap it. I can walk really far around it. I can handle it. I believe in myself. So you might not feel like you can handle it until you think, well, how would I handle it? You know, I, I remember back to coaching gymnastics and these kids would get up to just do something simple like a pullover on the bar where you put your chin up and then you kick your feet over the front. Simple, you know, for someone who's been doing it for a little while, but not for somebody who is new. And these kids would walk up and go, I can't do it. And I'd say, well, what if you had a jet pack? What if there was no gravity? What if I helped you? And they're like, well, yeah, I guess I could. I'm like, great, you can, hooray, here we go. And so that's that's the way we wanna start looking at it, is instead of going, ah, a spider, or oh no, a scary skill, or oh no, something I don't think I can do. Well, what if you had a jetpack? What if you had a helper? What if you had some mats? How could you do it? That's what I'm always teaching people, especially in the Perform Happy community, because it's mostly, it's a lot of kids working through fear. And so I'm reminding them constantly, what can you do? What is possible? And starting to aim their attention at that, it, it like opens the whole world back up. So then let's go to our next page. When I think there are monsters in my room, I feel scared and I'm not sure I can go to sleep. I can use my stuffies as a monster shield. I can yell at the monsters that I'm not scared. I can put music on and concentrate on that. I can go to sleep. I believe in myself. So this, it's like talking about focus. And I actually do work with plenty of kids who, they, if they have anxiety in one area, often they do have trouble going to sleep or they have times when they don't know what to think about or their mind is just gonna go wild if they don't give it something to do. So you figure out, okay, what would you rather do than think about what you're scared of or what you don't like? Could you listen to music? Could you sing a song in your head? Could you count to 10? What are some things that you could do instead of thinking, what if, what could go wrong, what's scary? It's, a, it's brilliant, you know? And so I talk to my daughter when she's in bed and she doesn't want to go to sleep. And I say, well, what are four things you could think about instead of I don't want to go to sleep? You could think about your yaya, your stuffed lion. You could think about, um, and she like, these are her ideas, of course. She always goes, I think about you. I'm like, thanks, okay, you always say that. So I don't feel so special, but okay. I think about daddy, I think about yaya. I think about Nana. So she thinks about her favorite people. And so if you have, if you're up against an idea that you don't want to have in your mind, like, ah, what if this happens? Come up with other things to think about. Shield yourself with stuffed animals if you need to, to keep the negativity out. I mean, really just being creative, actually turning on the right side of your brain, the creativity part, in a way turns off the left side of your brain that's in that, what's going to go wrong? Oh my gosh, what could happen? So if you go into creativity mode, telling stories in your head, doing something that's, that gets that part of you firing, it will, it will majorly turn on the volume on the stuff that's keeping you stuck and scared. When my brother breaks my building, I feel so frustrated. I'm not sure I can control myself. I can give up building forever. I can find a cave to build in where no one can find me. I can forgive my brother because he's little. I can control myself because I believe in myself. Now the thing that's happening at the end of each page is so she's you know she's not sure if she can handle her emotions and at the end she goes i believe in myself and so just having that that so since my three-year-old and i've been reading this we were in the pool yesterday and she was like i don't want to be near the pool monster we have this little street sweep or street sweeper pool sweeper with the cord and so she doesn't like it because we've nicknamed it the pool monster and therefore it's scary like maybe we shouldn't have done that but that's okay we thought it was hilarious and now she's like pool monster so i so we went up to it and i was like get out of my way pool monster i'm not scared of you i believe in myself and she was like yeah i believe in myself i'm not scared of you pool monster and so just saying it i believe in myself i'm scared to do this skill i'm scared of getting hurt i'm mad at my coach but i know i'm gonna get through it because i believe in myself so it's those, it's basically threefold. Identify what is the emotion? What is it that's freaking me out? And then what is it that I need to do? Or what are some options of what I can do? And then remember at the, like at the end of the day, bottom line, I believe in myself. Therefore, I'm going to get through this. And think, is that a stretch for you to actually say, I believe in myself. I know I'll get through this. Whether it's a little tiny problem or a big, huge, scary one. Can you honestly say, I believe in myself? Well, one way to get there is to start believing in yourself, actively, vocally. Uh, when I think I might get lost, I feel worried and I'm not sure I'll know what to do. 
I can click my heels three times and transport myself home. I can stand still and yell really loudly for help. I can find an adult I trust and tell them what's wrong. I know what to do if I get lost. I believe in myself. So she goes on and on. She goes through jealousy. She goes through freaking out because somebody did something that she didn't, she wanted to do. Um, she gets disappointed. She gets sad. She gets shy. All these different emotions. Um, nervous. And it's okay. She can deal with all of them. Look at my, my beautiful Ruby's art. <laughs> she can get through all the emotions because she believes in herself. And because she's given herself three solutions to every problem. So if you do that, if you take out a piece of paper and you write down, these are my roadblocks. These are the the three things that are getting in the way of me getting my goal. Just write down those three things. And then next to each one, write three different possible solutions. Okay, so stand in place and yell really loud, shield myself with stuffies, tell a friend, whatever it is, have three solutions. And then remind yourself, I can handle this, I believe in myself. So I know today was a little bit hokier for the younger audience, but um, oh, I have another book here that I just wanna show. Another one, You Can Face Your Fears, where this, this little guy goes and, and faces everything he's scared of. And so this is something that I obviously work with a lot is fear. And so being able to say, I am brave. I can face my fears and win. Like affirmations, coming up with a statement that you can say that, that reminds you, I can face my fears little by little, just in little increments until it starts to not be so scary with those affirmations to pump you up and remembering I believe in myself are some great ways that you can get your teeny tiny athletes up to speed and feeling good about themselves. Um, so you guys feel free to send me questions. This one was all about, you know, the moms and dads who were like, what do I do with my five and six year old? Well, here's some ideas. So send me questions to Rebecca at performhappy.com. Join us in the perform happy community at performhappy.com. And if you are not already on our email list, head over to complete performance coaching and get on the email list so that you can be sure to know when the workbook comes out and, um, and get access to these videos every week from me and from my amazing staff of well-qualified coaches. All right, you guys, I'll see you again next time.